<laughs> Ready? Hello, a very warm welcome to Box Park here in Wembley. Today, the fighters will step on the scales and face off for the final time ahead of a bumper night of action across the road at Wembley Arena on Saturday night. Alongside me, Johnny Nelson and Matt Macklin. Good to see you guys. Johnny hasn't got his food buzzer with him today. <laughs> He's eaten. We're safe. <laughs> it is a great show tomorrow night. Headlined by Richard Riappo and Fabio Turchi. How much are you looking forward to it? Excellent on the card too. But of course, the main fight that we're all uh, anticipating and looking forward to is, is, is Riappo. Riappo is number 12 with the IBF. Uh, Turchi's number 11. Every fight's important. I know this takes an eliminator, but it is at this stage because both fighters have the dream of getting that opportunity to box for the world title against Mario Spredis, RBF champion. So now, you know, they've got to get things right. We're going to see him get on the scales today. And I, I've, I've looked at Richard, and this guy naturally can bang. Naturally, even like a little tap hurts. So I'm thinking, do you struggle at weight? So I want to see what he looks like when he gets in the weight. Like Johnny said, Matt, he can actually bang, but there is more to his game, and we've seen that improve over the last few fights, especially under Angel Fernandez. Yeah, I think he's improved dramatically. You know, he really has gone up every single fight, and uh, momentum, activity, and you know, his last fight against Juma. You know, Juma won some rounds. He was tricky. He was southpaw. He was mobile. He was quick, but he took his time. He was patient, and it was a brilliant body shot in the end, which which uh, closed the show. So. I think uh, he's closing in on a world title shot. Can't afford any slip-ups. Difficult opponent. Only lost once to Tommy McCarthy. Obviously, Rep Paul stopped Tommy McCarthy. But Styles make fights. And he'll be confident. The heat of spring in the upset. But, you know, it, I think, you know, Rep Paul... I think I favour him to win, and uh, but it's going to be tricky. But we have been in this situation so many times, haven't we? When that, that world title shot is in touching distance. And that's when maybe a little bit of complacency can come in. You can overlook. He cannot afford to do that tomorrow night, Richard. Carr. So that's when fighters... The, the, when, why that happens is because fighters look past the, the, the opponent in front of them. I personally think Richard should probably have another fight after this before uh, he gets okay. a crack. Uh, at the world title and, and the champions that are out there if they're looking at Richard Rapper they're looking at the fighters in their, uh, in their division I'd pick Richard now before the kid actually is, is, is confident to match his ability that's what I do but you know what they're going to try and fast track him they're going to try and get in there he's learning on the job he's getting better slowly but surely he's going to make mistakes he's going to win, lose and draw at some point in his career he's got to be able to be prepared for that so now at this moment in time he can't afford any trip ups he can't afford to, to look past Turchi he can't afford to do that until he gets in the ring to fight for that world title then he's an everything has to be what do you think, Matt? Is the timing right? Or would you like, Johnny, would you like to see him have a couple more fights before we even look at that? Yeah, I think a couple more because he's improving. You know, he's, if he was the finished article, then, then you, roll, you roll the dice. But I think he is, and I think he's still, there's still improvements to be made as well. Um, look, Turchi as well, the fact Turchi's only had that one defeat. You know, he's not coming over here to make up the numbers. He's not reading the React Force script. He's, he's a got tough his own test script. For him. He's a contender as well. He's just he's had the win. He's come back since with a win, and his confidence will be restored. And maybe he had an off night against Tommy McCarthy. So listen, this this is an intriguing battle. And we like those ones a lot. Right, the fighters are just about to get on the scales. So let's hand you over to MC Buddy Johnson. Good afternoon, everybody, and a warm welcome to you all. We're back here once again at Box Park, right here in Wembley, for the official weigh-ins of Boxers Fight Night, scheduled for tomorrow evening at the Ovo Arena. This weigh-ins is officiated by the British Boxing Board of Control, and in attendance right now here on the stage is Nigel Thomas and Gary Madden. And of course, our sponsors, Bet365, Everlast Village Hotels, and Wow Hydrates, our official hydration partner of today's weigh-in. Big thank you to all of you being here with us this afternoon as we're set to get things on the way for Reactor versus Turchi. First up, we begin in the Super Featherweight division as we welcome to the scales right now, Ricky Starkey. So, four rounds of super featherweight between Jimmy Lee and Ricky Stark. Ricky Stark, he fights out a little In terms of Jimmy Lee, Johnny, this is just his second fight, but so far, so good for him. 
Uh, 18 years old. He's mature. How he talks about the fight game. He might be a boy out of the room, but when he talks boxing, you, you, you sense the maturity out of him. This is his second professional fight. He has dreams, real, real dreams in this, and he brings a big support. You heard him there in the background. So to him, he thinks this is part of his journey. How highly do you rate him? Uh, difficult to say. He's, uh, He's only a kid, isn't he? 18 years old, one and over. But, but I like, and I, I, his pro debut, I was impressed. I thought he looked good. Uh, and also, he'd been out of the ring a while, hadn't he, with, with COVID and everything. So, really, he'd only had junior amateur experience as schoolboy. So, his pro debut was impressive. Uh, long, long way to go, but definitely one to keep an eye on. I mean, he could have waited and tried to get in for the Olympic, the Olympic cycle, but he chose not to. He chose to turn over at an early age. We often talk about the pros and cons of turning pro early. Uh, yes, but some fighters are better pros than they are amateurs. And that's it. And he's probably looking, thinking, do I want to wait or do I want to capitalise on my youth at this point? And use my speed, my strength, everything I've got as a young man. Because I know they have the professional style suits me. And that, that's obviously the, the line he's gone down. And it's a big risk, you know, hoping, you know what, see if I can get into the Olympics. What if you don't get in? You've wasted those time, that time. Well, it was a good learning fight for him last time out. How much of a test do you think will be Ricky Starkey? And what will he give him tomorrow night? No, I think it'll be a similar thing. You know, he's a guy who's, who's got a losing record, but he's tough, he's mature. And, you know, Jimmy Lee's still adapting to the pro game. And that'll take a while. Um, I think he's got a pro style, don't get me wrong, but to get his physical maturity. You know, he's years off, isn't he? He's 18 years old. But it's a slow, it'll be a slower process, a slower project if you're building and managing a kid like that. It's, you just want to keep him busy, keep him improving. He's, he's well off. And, and, and just not rush it. Sorry? And just not rush it. Exactly. And now we welcome her opponent to the skills, Ebony. Jones! Ebony Jones versus Beck Connolly. Six two minute rounds of super bantamweight tomorrow night. For Ebony Jones, it was, it was a bit of a bump in the road in the last fight. She was really hard on herself, frustrated with the draw against Catapuli. What do you think she's been looking for tomorrow night? I mean, there's a lot to like about yeah. Ebony Jones. She's Without a bit a, of a pocket rocket. Yes, she is. She's uh, very enthusiastic. She loves the game. She actually looks in really good condition yeah. today. This is, this is, you know, when she walked in earlier on, I actually thought she's actually done well. She actually looked like she's trained really hard for it. She wants to learn that every fight. If you're going to have situations like that, fights where you draw, fights where you lose, you want them to be at the beginning part of your career and they'll make you stronger mentally. And so, uh, yeah, she's right that she, she criticises herself a lot because she wants to forever improve. But on paper, Matt, Beck Connolly, she has the experience, okay, she's only, only won three in her career so far, but she could be a, a tough, tough, tough night for Ebony yeah. tomorrow night. Yeah, and as you say, she, she, she said earlier, she doesn't want to be getting draws, you know, she wants to be winning and progressing, and she had that amateur pedigree, so she, she has high expectations of herself, but, you know, Beck Connolly is durable, is experienced, and she can be awkward. And we move now to the heavyweight division as we welcome to the scales, Jake Darnell. The official win is brought to you by Wild Hydrate, our official hydration partner. The 29 year old Jake Darnell steps in the scales. So, Jake Darnell versus Jamie TKV. Another outing for Jamie tomorrow night. A decent ounces. amateur, big personality, but still, I guess, a little bit rough around the edges. Yeah, again, it's a guy who's, it's, a, it's another fight, he's gaining his experience, he's still progressing, he's still developing, he's far from the finished article, but there's definitely talent there, and it's, it'll be interesting to see, this is obviously a fight he should win, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments, what improvements he's made since the last time we've seen him. How impressed have you been with Jamie TKV so far? I mean, carries a decent amount of power, doesn't he? Got, got good hands. You know what? He actually he, he actually loves to actually box. He can box. He's not the biggest of heavyweights, but he's got good fast down. Very confident. Uh, 20, 28 years old. You know, he's mature when he gets in there. He thinks, you know what? I've got to I've got to fast track myself through, and he knows what's out there in the, in the heavyweight landscape, especially domestic. Look. So there's some good fights out there for him. It's just that path, how fast he's going to take that path to get there. But it's finding that balance, isn't it, Johnny? You know, you're sort of, you, like you say, you, you want to fast track yourself. You want to push yourself on quicker than you probably should do. But it's finding the right pace, the right timing, being matched right. 
Yeah, and that, that's everything. At 20, 20, 28 years old, you just you don't want to make such mistakes of, of, of the thing you're right. I've rushed this now. In the heavyweight division, you look at who's out there. You look at who's at the top of domestically heavyweight division, but then you look who's in the top 15, top 20. There are some really good fights there. I've got a huge respect for uh, Jay Dunham's footwear. He is rocking some colourful crocs. Like I've actually got some crocs. <laughs> I knew you would. I knew, I knew, I knew Johnny Nelson would own a pair of crocs. What kind of fight are you expecting in this one? Stands at one and De definitely entertaining one. I think, uh, I think Jamie TK, TKB, he was pretty good to watch last time. A nice, smooth, slick style. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think it'll be an entertaining bout. I mean, it, it's a great time to be a heavyweight, isn't it, right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he doesn't Ladies seem like a massive heavyweight, does he? That huge, he looks like he probably, if he trimmed up, he could probably do cruiserweight, but... I mean, the heavyweight division is on fire domestically, internationally, just overall. But well, you've got to say that, you know, these guys are, are, are well Everyone off that now, but he wants to make gains and get there eventually. I, I'd love to tell you what Johnny Nelson is showing me. Johnny, are, you just show me a picture. Are these your Crocs? Yes. Oh, my <laughs> days. Oh, wow. Speechless. I don't know what to say. So Shannon Ryan takes on Gemma Ruegg in this one. Shannon Ryan, part of 258 management. Another step on the road for her. Again, so far so good for her. There's a lot to like about her. Yeah, well, well schooled, uh, good fundamentals. Uh, really enjoyed her, her, her debut. Oh, sorry, her last fight. Um, she was good. Yeah, so another another step on the journey. King Oscar Ryan fights out of Watford. He's 25. Right there, we're looking at, as far as I'm concerned, our potential and headliner is Shannon Ryan, and that's a big shout at this stage in in her career. And One thing that Shannon Ryan does possess is, is that confidence. To say it's so early on in her pro career, she oozes confidence and calm, which will stand her, I guess, in good stead. Yeah, confidence is key. You have to, if you don't believe in yourself, how can you expect anyone else to believe in you? And she has got really good, uh, you know, technical ability. We only seen one fight, her pro debut, but it was impressive. And also, John, we say there's a lot, but what, what a platform to be on, to, to, to push on in your career. What a platform. What a platform it, it is. The rumours you hear about this young girl uh, are mad in, in sparring. The guy she's sparring with and the, her body shots are, are, are a TNT. That's what she's got all about. She can fight. And again, I'm telling you, potentially, we're looking at the, our, our headliner. And I mean, down the line, we're probably talking two years down the line. But that young girl could really ruffle some feathers. Exactly. She, she's got all the ingredients. You just want her to deliver the goods in the ring. Yeah. And she could be one of our success stories. Fighting's in her DNA. It's in her DNA. You can tell her dad, uh, all the team around her. She's got a big team around her at this stage. Uh, AJ's team have signed her up, so they expect big things from this girl too. So, again, it's just it's lovely to watch the journey as it unfolds. But how, how quickly do you move someone like Shannon? Uh, I think get her out as often as possible. Whenever Boxer or Sky have a show on, get her on the undercard. Even if she's not actually on TV, get her fighting. Get her in there regularly. Get her comfortable with all this sort of stuff. Get her comfortable with, with the pressure. Get her comfortable with having an opponent. Yeah, that, that's going to test her. So last time she was trying really hard, smothered the work, made it a bit hard for herself. Now she's going to have to steady up a bit. But she loves to fight. You can tell, you can tell how she, her swagger, you can tell with her team, she loves to do that. Yeah, she, she certainly looks apart. Matt, in terms of fights though tomorrow night, which one is grabbing your eye the most on the card? Um, I think Zach Shelley and Jermaine Brown will be, be a good fight, I think that's a tough one to call. Um, obviously the main event, and I am looking forward to the pro debut of Lauren Price because I think it's going to be a special journey. Absolutely, for Lauren Price it is a huge night for her. 
start of a new chapter from what was well a glittering amateur career in boxing but in terms of sport she's pretty much ticked every box under the sun she, she's a real talent oh, she's, she's obviously a natural born athlete uh, hand to eye coordination that competitive edge she's achieved in anything she's ever put a hand to um, had a fantastic decorated amateur career which you know culminated in the olympic gold medal so you know she said earlier she said yesterday in the press conference i didn't know much about this pro game but she's gonna learn and uh look tonight tomorrow night is a pro debut start of what should be an amazing journey and i'm looking forward to it in a way though not knowing much about the pro game and just just going in it it's probably best for all you probably don't want to know too much ignorance is bliss sometimes especially in the pro game you, if you were living your own little bubble when you get in there to fight you're not influenced by any gossip outside you just want to fight and that's what she actually remind her attitude reminds me that of katie taylor where she takes herself away she's not bothered what he said she just wants to fight that's shannon absolutely right fighters are ready to get back on the scales and let's hand you back to buddy johnson First of all, let's say a huge welcome uh, to the head of boxing development at Sky Sports, Mr. Adam Smith, as we continue with the official weigh-ins right here at Box Park in Wembley. Ladies and gentlemen, Boxer is proud to present our first championship matchup of tomorrow evening for the vacant WBC International Silver Welterweight title. The first challenger to step to the scales Fights out of Germany, please welcome Sebastian Formella! So, 10 rounds of the vacant WBC International Silver Welterweight title between Chris Congo and Sebastian Formella. I am personally very much looking forward to this fight. It's a real classic crossroads fight, this one, Johnny. Without a doubt, uh, Formella has the reputation, obviously, because it got him with, with Conor Ben. He's only lost twice in his career. The other one was Sean Porter. Yeah, Sean Porter. So, for Chris Congo, this is a great scout for Chris at this stage in his career. That's if he wins that. Is. But it's going to be a tough fight. As Johnny just said, Sebastian Formella has only lost to Conor Ben and Sean Porter, but he's never been put down. So he's tough, he's durable, he knows how to look after himself. So this is a, a step up, it's a tough fight for Chris Congo, because, you know, Formella is way more experienced. And how much of a statement would it be for Chris Congo if he was able to do the job in a, in a quicker time than the other two did it, Sean Porter and also Conor Ben? How much of a statement would it be? Oh, it'd be a huge statement. I, I think that'll be hard for him to achieve, to be honest, because, you know, Conor Ben, big puncher, you know, Sean Porter, big puncher, very aggressive and proven at a much higher level than Chris Congo's ever been at. So if he was to get that stoppage, that will be a major statement. But I think I think just to get the win, it'll, it'll, be, a good, it'll be good for him. And we're going to officially at 10 stone six pounds. Looks good, Johnny. Looks in brilliant condition. Tall, lean, stripped down. There's not an ounce of fat left on him. Now he's now that the hard, the the, the hard work to this fight has been done. Now the real work gets done tomorrow night. He has the height, he has the reach, he has the confidence, but he understands he's under pressure here because there'll be a lot more eyes on this fight for many different reasons. So he's he a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He's 29 years old. 14 fights, you know, he's, he's six years, he's six years younger uh, than Formella, so he knows what he's capable of doing. He's going to make sure he gets it right. But Congo, it is technically that he's a fresher fighter. Could that stand him in in, in good stead tomorrow night? It, it needs to, he, and, and in a way, he, it's not just about the win; it's the fashion of the win. He doesn't need to. He, he can't be struggling to get the win. You know, he needs to make a statement with this win to say, "Look, respect me beyond domestic level." Really yeah, that was a big snare for Chris Congo. Like I say, I mean, I don't, I don't see Chris Congo stopping for many. He's experienced, he's soft, he's durable. Listen, and he's been possibly a much higher level. I think for Chris Congo just to get the win here, that'll be good. He'll be happy with that. Well, Chris Congo is just making his way to have a word with Andy Scott. He's ready, so let's hear from him now. Chris, 10-6 on the nose. You're looking in great shape and a very serious face off there. Is this all about strictly business tomorrow night? 100% strictly business. We're always coming shape. 
that's what we do. We work smart and on the night we'll do the business for sure. Sebastian Formella is someone we know pretty well. What have you got to do to beat him? A lot of things and tomorrow I'm going to show it and uh, yeah, I can't wait to show all you guys what I'm about to do. He's been in with some of the best in this division and nobody's been able to stop him. He is world-class toughness personified. Do you believe as you stand here now, if you produce everything that you produce behind closed doors in the gym, that you can be the first man to stop him? Well, he's boxed Conor Ben, Sean Porter. We don't care about them, but he hasn't boxed Chris Congo. And he will see Saturday night. You have said for a long time, I just need the platform, I just need the occasion, I just need the right fights, and I do believe I can go all the way. Does this start tomorrow night? This is your launch pad towards the top of the 147 division. 100%. We're going to the top of the world. And tomorrow, Saturday the 11th, this is the start of it. Chris, go well. Good luck. Thank you. A lot of confidence there, Johnny. Ambition. Ambition. Yeah. That's what you... Do you like that? Yeah, I do, of course. You've got to have a realistic ambition. I'm thinking, right, that's what we've got to do. He mentioned uh, Conor Ben, so he, he mentions your point. You know that's in the back of his mind, and you know for a fact he's going to measure himself against them. And if some fighters are good with that kind of pressure, now, I think that's what he needs as well. As we're set to welcome onto the scales, fighting out of gates and please welcome Jonah Bola! Jonah Bola, standing six feet tall, with a record of five victories and seven losses in his debut in 2015. Jonah Valau versus Vidal Riley, six Jonah rounds at Cruiserweight. Johnny Vidal is so desperate to get in that Cruiserweight mix. Without a doubt, and you know what? He's a very talented young fighter, Vidal. He's unfortunately been hampered by injuries, which I don't understand why, where's he been to get these injuries, or what the injuries actually are. Well, just to explain but, that, he had a couple of years out of the ring. We saw him return against Wilbur Borchevo. And then he picked up another injury, yeah. which we're not, we asked him last time, didn't we? A few weeks ago we asked him, we're not quite sure what that injury and that's was. And he's not, he's it's not. It's a bit of a stop start, which yeah, is and, and that's, that's the frustrating thing about it, because when you see him perform, you say, this kid's not bad at all. You know, he boxes like in more season than his record says. So, Fidel, he needs to get momentum now. That's his only problem. So far, momentum's going to be his, his upset. And that word is always key, isn't it? Getting momentum. And I imagine it's none more frustrating than the Vidal having that stop start. You know, you think you're getting going again, and then another injury crops up. It is so frustrating for Friday. He will just want to get back in the ring, do the good, and push on. Also, well, you know, in football, everyone everyone knows play. You know, they've come back in training, then they need match fitness to play a few friendlies because you need that level of competition to make you faster and sharper. At the top level, it's what you're talking split seconds, half yards, and you need, you know, when you've been out of the ring, you lose that sharpness. So he needs he needs ring time. He needs to build his profile. He needs to, uh, the momentum of that, and also to develop and stay sharp and improve. So, what kind of test is Joe Bolau going to um, give Vidal tomorrow night? I think it'll be a tough cookie. Uh, uh, serv ex serviceman. So they said he said this is my full time job. You know, so he'll be fit. He'll be hungry, and he'll have bottles. So this isn't a pushover for for Vidal to think someone's going to jump on the floor. This this young man here is going to try and put him on pressure. Cool as you like, isn't he? It's just that there's that oddness about him. So you, you're intrigued to say, what is it? Got to figure it out. But yeah, I like it. I like it. Something different about it. All right, well, Vidal is just making his way over to Andy Scott to grab a word. Just getting his T-shirt back on. I mean, he's already got a big audience, Johnny. He's got his whole YouTube world watching his career. Yes, he has, and the thing is, he could potentially be criticised if he start, doesn't start producing the goods. He can't talk about it and not be able to do it. And let's see what he's got to say to the Andy Scott. Vidal, you got your hair cut outside the arena yesterday, looking sharp, looking good on the scales today as well. You're cutting a very confident figure. Just what do you want to produce tomorrow night? Of course, of course. Listen, it's the homecoming. I've been in the ring now in February. I've come back in June, as I've been saying. Consistency is what we need. I'm fulfilling it, so we're going to put on a show. Yeah, it is about ticking the boxes. This is your first time boxing as a professional in London. How much will that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. Obviously, this is my home. 
But if I'm going to be in my home, I've got to represent. So that's what I'm here to do. Jonah Valal, serving soldier. He has boxed up at heavyweight. He has knocked heavyweights out. He's there to be respected. What do you know about him and what do you think you have to do to uh, beat him tomorrow? Listen, he's game. He's a, he's a man. He's come to fight. He's got to represent himself the same way I'm trying to represent. So I've got respect for that. But this is the game I'm in and I'm here to show that my skills are superior. What did you take away from the Wilberforce Shehepo performance and what do you want to improve on? What I took from that is to be myself, chill, and when I'm relaxed, I'm dangerous, and I'm very relaxed. We know you're a showman. Anything planned for tomorrow? I think you ring walks to your own track last time. What have you got planned for tomorrow? That's going to be standard. We don't even need to talk about that, but um, it's just a point of good performance. The focus is the performance, and uh, I've had a great camp. I put in all the work to demonstrate to the people that I'm going to constantly improve, and uh, tomorrow is just the first stage of that. We look forward to it. Good luck. Thank you. Those couple of girls waiting there. Looks like they're waiting for their food, Matt. They need to get one of Johnny's buzzers that he had yesterday. Good, it's a good turnout here today. Yeah, at the definitely. Good atmosphere, good buzz. Good excitement for the card. It's a solid card from start to finish, though. Good to see the turnout. As Vidal just said there, I mean, there are so many opportunities in terms of cruiserweight domestically. And like I said at the start, how desperate he is to get in the mix, because if you can get that momentum, there's some really good fights out there for him. Yeah, and, and we mentioned profile and building profile. He has a big profile because of his, you know, social media um, presence, but he wants to be... He wants to be an established fighter. He wants to be taken seriously. Now, Johnny, this is the fight that potentially could be fight of the night. Jermaine Brown versus Zach Jelly. Ten rounds of the English super middleweight title. This has all the ingredients to be an absolute crapper, cracker. Boxer versus fighter. The same familiar I'm sure he's content. Zach Jelly and Brown are both familiar with each other. Jelly speaks like a man that's always going to have Brown's number. Uh, maybe that might be his downfall because I think this is a done deal. They know each other from the amateurs. They know each other from the boxing club. But can you read too much into that? Pop. Can you read too much into that, though? Chelly thinks he's got his number. He thinks he's too good for him on every level. Through the amateurs in the gym. And that's what he says. Brown's argument is, I've grown up now. I'm not that young man anymore. So we're going to see if the transition is going to continue or something new is going to be bound for, for Zach Chelly. Jermaine Brown, you've got the, the boxer there. Zach Shelley, more of the puncher. What's it going to come down to in one of your eyes? Yeah, uh, I, he, Zach Shelley's definitely the bigger puncher and the physically stronger of the two. Uh, Brown's been very active lately. He's got nice... Uh, he'll be sharp, I guess, because he wasn't that long ago before. Um, but I think, I think Shelley's bigger, stronger. He'll look to impose that on him, try to make his physical uh, advantages, uh, attribute be an advantage for him in the fight. And it's just whether Brown can outmaneuver him and stay ahead of him during the fight. I'm not sure. Interest, this is probably the hardest fight to pick a winner in. And a fight that the good catch fire. Sorry? A fight that really yeah, good Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, you know, because if Brown is out boxing Shelley, then he'll have to take risks, which, you know, could open up to getting caught more. Interesting. This face off. A lot of intent between these two. This is championship action, ladies and gentlemen, for the English. You can sense it. It's professional. You know what? This is the professional button. They like each other. But they want to beat each other up. You can tell. You can just tell it there. Charlie's so confident, so fun, and he's actually jacked his job in. That's what I was. Well, he was a teacher, wasn't he? And, and he made sure, he said in his head, I don't want to go back to doing a nine to five. And that is his motivation. He doesn't want to go back to doing it. So he is giving absolutely everything. Well, maybe he should have made that decision after this fight instead of before, because that might have been, uh, might, there might be a lot of humble pie to eat for, for his school meal if you have to go back. Well, we'll find out tomorrow night. Uh, let's hear from both fighters there with Andy Scott. Jermaine, as challenger, I come to you first. We think this is going to be fireworks. Are we right? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Can't wait. If you two do what we think you're going to do, we just think the styles are going to clash. Do you think that he's going to stand there or do you think he's going to try and box? No, nah, no, nah, he's going to be on the back foot. Definitely. I don't think he's going to stay in the, so he's going to be on the back foot. Those of you that can't see, there were some eyebrows raised there from Zach Chelly. You're not going to stand there and box, you're saying? Yeah, I'm not going to be on the back foot. He's going to be on the floor. 
You two know each other from the amateurs. You never fought as amateurs, but you sparred. Does that matter at all? Uh, not really, not really. Um, things change in the future, right? Uh, he's a pro now, not an amateur anymore, so I'm going to see what he's got. Didn't think much of him as an amateur, but now he's a pro. We'll see what he's got. Fundamentally, do you believe that you're the better fighter and you are the better boxer? I believe so, of course. That's why I'm here. He says that he's fought better people on his record. That, as he just said there, that he is better in all departments. You believe he's wrong, obviously. No, 100%. He hasn't boxed anyone major. Anyone that he's boxed is like on the same level as or below me. And he's saying it's a step below, but it doesn't make any sense. It's definitely his hardest opponent he's ever boxed. Final word to both of you, your prediction. Jermaine first. Uh, knockout. Zach, he's going to wake up and apologise. OK, let's leave it there. Thank you, guys. Good luck to both of you. Matt, that is exactly what we love to hear. Yeah, exactly. Both guys fully believing they're the better man. Uh, I think, look, he, 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 people are saying it's 50-50, tough to pick. I'll probably lean to Chelly because I think he's been in deeper. I think he's stronger. I think he hits harder. But look, Brown's Brand, undefeated. He's, been, he's had good momentum. He's been busy. So he'll be sharp. It's a good fight. First up, please welcome to the scales all the way from Iceland, Valkadur Kristen Gauthier. This is such a big moment tomorrow night for Lauren Price as she enters into a new chapter in her professional career, making a professional debut, an outstanding amateur, Olympic gold medalist. In terms of sports, she's pretty much done everything. Former footballer, top of the game in that as well. How much of a big opportunity and a big moment for her is this tomorrow night? I'm not even going to try and pronounce her opponent's name. Good to be here. <laughs> Comes in seven fight, a seven fight. Kristen does it. Officially at ten stone at three pounds. Okay, that's fight number one. Seven fights she's had under her belt. Now Long Price is getting in there with somebody that knows the pro game. Can she back up the balls? Will will the fighting okay, of a signing up this young woman be worth it? Saturday night we'll find out. Saturday night we'll find out exactly what she's made of in the professional ranks. Right. One of the newest signings to the boxer roster, former kickboxing world champion, international footballer, and Tokyo 2020 Olympic middleweight gold medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise and welcome to the scales, Lauren Price! Matt, there's already quite a bit of buzz surrounding Lauren Price. You can see behind her, Carrie Sartre also making her debut. In just a few weeks' time, they live together, they train together, live and breathe everything. I mean, that in itself it is an amazing thing. But with this fanfare and a lot of expectation on Lauren's shoulders comes a lot of pressure. How do you think she'll manage that? I think she'll be fine. I think she'll thrive off it. I think great athletes thrive under pressure. They need pressure to perform to their best. And, you know, she's been at the pinnacle in sport, hasn't she? And Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, like I say, she'll, she'll thrive under pressure. And uh, I, I, even though it's a fight that we expect her to win comfortably, I'm excited to see it because I think it's going to be the start of a great journey. I think she might be the girl to carry the baton from Katie Taylor. Well, forward. exactly like you just said a, a few minutes ago, you said you kind of see similarities to Katie Taylor in Lauren. Yeah, a, 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 an exceptional athlete. Yeah. You know, Katie Taylor was brilliant at football. Anything yeah. she did, and obviously Lauren Bryce is, is of that mold. Uh, and I think she'll be a she'll be a trailblazer as well. Katie Taylor was the trailblazer, and I think she'll be the girl that she passes the baton to. I'm sure there will be a few nerves tomorrow night, but do you think Lauren Price will she take it in the stride? Yes, she will. I, I, even now, you, you look at her now. She's got the physique of a fighter, not of a boxer, very of a strong, fighter. Very strong. She looks strong, good shoulders, good back, good stance. You know, she's got everything about her. Her opponent looks in good condition. But Price is just something natural about it where she, you think, you know what, I bet she's naturally very, very strong. Now in the programs, we're going to see how successful she's going to be. I'm not sure who's going to be more nervous tomorrow night, whether it will be Karis or Lauren. Definitely Karis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. I think they both agreed that they're never going to fight on the set on the same card. That would, that would just be too much oh, of that, training and nerves. I mean, can you imagine? That would be terrible. I mean, it was it was bad enough with the Smith brothers boxing yeah. on the same card. You know, because you're 
warming up and your brothers aren't or, or, your, or your partners are just before you and it doesn't doesn't go the way you expect it to or hope it does i mean that could completely derail you couldn't it emotionally all right well let's hear what lauren's got to say she's with andy Lauren, one step closer. That's another box ticked. We had the press conference yesterday, and now you've done your first weigh-in as a professional. Huge roar to the crowd there. You look pumped up and a big smile on your face. Yeah, I'm just buzzing to go now. Um, preparation's gone really well, and I'm just looking forward to the journey. You only get one pro debut. So, yeah, I just want to go out and put on a good performance. Olympic middleweight champion. It obviously changes with a different type of training as a pro. Ten stone, five pounds, five ounces. Is that where you thought you would be? Yeah, to be honest, um, I made it quite easy. Uh, like I said, I boxed at middleweight as, as an amateur, but I was never a middleweight anyway. I always give a bit of weight away. But um, yeah, I'm obviously at my natural weight now. I've come down and yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. Like you said, as a pro, the run's a bit longer. But um, yeah, I'm just relaxed, ready to go. As an amateur, you've been around the world twice, seen everything once, but it will be a first tomorrow, your first professional ring walk. How do you think you'll feel at the top of the ramp, uh, even before that, when they knock on the changing room door and say, it's your time now? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be nervous no matter what. If I'm going nervous, there's something wrong. But um, good nerves, I'm going to thrive off them. I'm looking forward, you know, family and friends are coming to, to watch me, and you, you don't really get that often as an amateur. So, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it. Yeah, how do you think you will feel knowing that your loved ones are in the crowd there they were starved of atmosphere and crowd because of the pandemic and a lot of people couldn't travel it's gonna be a packed house tomorrow night and so many of them will be there to see you yeah it just pushed me on a little bit more you know um cheering me on and uh what can i say i'm, I'm grateful to everyone who's, who's coming along and and to watch and who's bought us again so thank you very much just finally, what do you want to show us under the bright lights tomorrow? It is the first time as a professional. We know what you can do as an amateur, but you think it's going to be a smooth transition and that style is going to um, move over to the, uh, the pro game? Yeah, for me, just settling down a little bit more now. Obviously, as an amateur, and obviously giving a lot of weight away as well. I had to be in and out on my toes, you know, using my, using my speed. Um, now I've come down to my natural weight. I can enjoy myself a little bit more, relax, throw a bit, throw a bit more combinations and dig a little bit more. So, yeah, I'm really excited and looking forward to the new journey. Fingers crossed for you. Good luck. We can't wait for it. Thank you. Laura Bryce taking it all in a stride there. Yes, she's uh, very mature and it's a bit, it's, what, 27 years old. I think um, the pro game will suit it down to the tee. Uh, uh, there's not even a worry about that. Um, even when you see her get on the stage, she actually, she's loving this. She's loving the whole whole effect. It'd be nerve wracking for a girlfriend as well because she'll be there ringside. They never want to box in the same belt at the same time uh, because they've got to support each other. It's going to be a rocky road ahead for both of them uh, in this career. But in terms of making a debut and opportunities, the positioning on the card, I mean, you don't really get much better than that, do you? No, but I think she deserves it because she's a, she's absolutely, a special talent, absolutely. you know, Olympic gold medalist. So she is a star in the making. So hence, that's why she's getting the billing. She is uh, thoroughly deserved. I can just see out the corner of my eye, Richard Riatpour waiting to come onto the stage. It He's a man, again, as cool as you like, takes it in his stride. He's used to this big occasion now. He's, he's used to headlining the shows. He knows he's still studying. He knows he's in, a, he's in a very fortunate position where he's now getting momentum in his career and learning each fight. So he's, um, so I'm really, I am really happy for him because he's got a good team around him. He said it's like a, a, a mini AJ team that he set up nutritionists, uh, 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 dietitianists, uh, masseur guys, all of them. He's got everybody that ticks every single box. So you couldn't, it's all set up for you to fail. If you can fight, then you're going to win. Here, everything's set up, it's about his design, his one.
we are just waiting for Sky Sports News to join us, so that's why we're a little bit stop-start at the moment. We will welcome those viewers in just a second. But in terms of the gym you were talking about that Richard Riat brought in, he's got the likes of Fraser Clark, AJ in with him. You feed off that, and you spoke about this yesterday, about just how much he gets from that in terms of growing. Yeah, I, I remember walking into the Institute, English Institute of Sport, just before the 2012 Olympics, and I said, everything is set up for success. This is now down to the individual's want and desire to win. Because there's no excuses, no excuse about training, prep or anything. Richard is now in that position, so this is all about his want and desire. Everything is set up for this young man to be a world champion. You can't ask for any much, much more better preparation, as in sparring, as in facilities, as in, as in a whole lot. So this is about him now and his character. Well, you, you spent time with him in the gym. I mean, I saw the piece on Sky Sports News. You nearly, you nearly got your head knocked off. Yes, I did. And <laughs> A very warm welcome to our Sky Sports News viewers joining us here at Box Park in Wembley ahead of a huge night of action tomorrow night, headlined by Richard Riatbor taking on Fabio Turchi. Johnny Nelson and Matt Macklin are alongside me. The main event fighters are just about to take to the scales just a couple of minutes ago before the Sky Sports News viewers joined us, Johnny. We were talking about your you spending time with Richard in the gym and you almost almost getting your your head knocked in. Yes, I did, Anna. <laughs> I nearly got my head blown off. I was going to let you off that. <laughs> uh, he's got natural power. He's so naturally very strong. And I said earlier, reminded me of uh, former WBO heavyweight champion Herbie Hyde, who didn't know how strong he actually was uh, when we sparred. But with uh, with Richard, he's that guy. His little taps are like studding punches. So if he can take that and trans make that transition to his boxing as well, he'll be so, so dangerous. Well, the fighters are ready to step on the scale, so let's hand you over to MC Bernie Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to introduce your main event of tomorrow evening. Boxer by Ben Shalom, brought to you by Bet365, Everlast Village Hotels, and Wow Hydrate, our official hydration partner of today's weigh-ins. A highly anticipated matchup, ladies and gentlemen, a true clash of the titans. Your main event, an IBF World Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator. First up to the scales, please welcome from Italy, the Stone Crusher, Fabio Turkey. So we know that world title shot for Richard Riatpour is dangling right in front of him. Ben Shalom has said it should he come through this on Saturday night that that will be his next opportunity. Cannot afford to overlook Fabio Terci. Just how tough a test is he for Richard? But this is the same opportunity for Fabio as well. He he's in touching distance of that that world title shot. He's the one that's rated higher than Richard Riatpour. I was walking down uh, the, the the precinct earlier and. Uh, he actually shows how old I am. He actually remembers my, my last opponent. And uh, and, uh, at 14 stone, three pounds and five ounces. Wow, banging, just inside, just inside. So, so he's been around boxing, he's been and around now, the experience of fighters, he's even watching for many for times. Do not underestimate him. He's had 14 knockouts in his 21 fight career. That's the amount of fights Richard has had. Never mind the amount of knockouts Richard had. Riyakpo. Here he comes, Matt. So far, so good for Richard Riyakpo. I mean, he has the momentum behind him, but could Fabio Turchi, could that be his banana skin tomorrow night, potentially? Absolutely. I mean, he's so close, but so far from getting that shot at the world title. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see probably have another couple of fights, because I think he's getting better, he's improving, and he's, I like his focus, but that's like... He... Victory's turn by way of knockout. And weighed in officially at 14 stone, 4 pounds. Well, there you go, 14, 4, dead on. I think that face says it all for Richard Riyadh. Yeah, bang on the limit. And uh, I think he, he will certainly be a lot heavier than that tomorrow night. He's big for the weight, carries serious power. He's improving his, his boxing ability, his IQ, his skill set. And that, that comes with experience. Um, I, I, I think he's going to look really good tomorrow night. I've just got a feeling, I think, 
Turchi is experienced. He will pose problems. But I think Riatbo is getting better and better. And I think I expect him to win convincingly. Johnny, as Matt just said there, Richard Riatbo is getting better and better with each fight. We know he carries that huge, huge power of his. But we have seen big improvements from him, adding more to his game over Mass the last few fights. Massive improvements, Hannah, but also massive holes which need to be filled. They need to be there, need to be covered because each time he gets one step closer, that world title fight, he's going to be in there with experienced fighters that will find any chicks in your armor. And he's trying to patch those up, thinking, right, get this right. What did they do wrong in the last fight? You know, every time he goes back to the dressing room, he says, right, we know what we've got to work on next. I like that. So I like that. Even after this fight, regardless of what happens, he's got to go back and think, right, how would I beat me? for the next fight he gets coming through. I don't want him to box for a world title fight next, but I do want That's it. in agreement with you. He feels exactly the same. What would you like to see him do? I'd like, again, get him in there with another another fast opponent that will put him under pressure, make him learn a little bit more. Two fights down, I say, right, there's nothing more that we can do. We cannot hold around that hand anymore. It's all you, son. Of the cruiserweight division, though, is absolutely thriving at the moment. There are so many potentially big fights out there. Fabio Turchi there, the Richard Riatbo. No nonsense, Richard doesn't want to, Richard shouldn't be his friend. You know, this is business. Shake his hand, play the game afterwards. Don't make the mistake. We saw that with with with, with Tyson Fury and Dylan White. These guys were planning each other up at the way. No, get on with it, get the fight done, then beat me. For Richard Riatbo though. We know if he can deliver the goods in the ring, he has every chance of, of huge success because outside of the ring, he's got his modeling contracts. He's absolutely flying. All the ingredients there to be a real success story. Yeah, but there's not one without the other. And so therefore, exactly. boxing is his, is his vehicle. That, that's his springboard for, for, for everything that comes from it. And I like that, but you know what? He's got to understand what is his priority. His priority is this. That's his main game. And the fact that I'm really jealous that he's got everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. All right, well, let's hear what Richard's got to say. He's with Andy Scott. Richard, react poor. 14-4, right on the limit. Bang on. You've been confident all week. How do you uh, feel now? That bit's done. The bit that every boxer tells me is the worst bit. Yeah, I feel really good. Now, um, uh, the plan is to go to Nando's. So I'm just waiting for my black card. But I just said to, to dunk, yeah. So, yeah, excited. There you go. Other food outlets are available. Just tell us what we can expect from you tomorrow night. Fabio Turchi is someone who's been there, seen it, and done it. Explosive performance from Richard Riakpo. The midnight train is coming. Preparation for this camp has been excellent. I'm motivated, I'm confident, I'm hungry. We know that at domestic level, that power is legit. This is a step up into European and fringe world class. Do you think that you carry that power up? And if the opportunity presents itself, you can knock Fabio Turchi out? Absolutely. He has to be on point for that fight. Any mistakes, he's going to be punished. And it's real power. It's not, um, you know, you get different types of power. You get people trying to load up and stuff. But this is real natural power, very explosive. That's why people come to watch me. You've had to play the waiting game. This was scheduled to happen last time out. You had to fight Dion Juma instead. Is that giving you more of an advantage? You've had longer to prepare, longer to get your mind right. Yeah, I think it has. Um, I had two camps back to back with Southpaw sparring, Southpaw partners in preparation. So I think this, this is actually perfect for me. High stakes at this level. We know a winner should go on to fight for a world title. Why will that be you? Because I'm the best. I'm the best. It's just as, as simple as that. You got a final prediction for us and everybody watching back home? KO. KO victory. Richard, go well. Ladies and gentlemen, the midnight train, Richard Riakpo. Richard Riatbo has come to join us on the say. Richard, you just seem, well, ready. Yeah, I'm ready. You know, this, this is what I dreamed of. I understand the opportunity in front of me. And um, yeah, I'm taking it very seriously. I know what I need to do. So I've done the work, you know. Now it's time to perform, time to enjoy. Just having a bit of musical chairs there. I think, I think we've lost Johnny. Johnny's gone. You've, you've biffed him off the way. Um, we spoke a bit about this yesterday in terms of the chat around the world title that's dangling in front of you. 
you cannot obviously afford to overlook Fabio Terci tomorrow night. But how are you blanking that out? How do, how do you put that out of your mind? You know what? I'm, I always see, see myself as an overachiever, so I try not to put too much pressure on myself. You know, I've done a lot for you know starting boxing at 19. Having, I haven't had that much fights. I've had under 30 fights in my whole career, you know, as a boxer. So, listen, it's, it's all a win for me, you know. And uh, but at the same time, I'm very ambitious. So, I know what I need to do, and I know I can do it. Where do you see Turchi's weaknesses? Um, I feel Turchi is there to get hit. I think it'll be hit be easier to hit um, than Dion Dreamer. And obviously, you know what happens when I hit people. That's it. One of the things you feel that you need to watch out for most with him, you know, you only spot an opponent, there's always a couple of big things, but that's his strength. I've got to avoid that. What, what, what is it about him that you're most focused on? Obviously, this is a big opportunity. Just remember, like, you know, the person that wins this fight is going to go on to challenge for a world title. And he, I don't know, but he may have aspirations of, of challenging for a world title and becoming a world champion like, like I do. So that's already a threat in itself. You seem to be just taking it all in your stride, very calm, cool, relaxed. How how used are you now to like headlining the shows? It feels good, it feels good. This is what I dreamed of when I was younger, when I came to the game. And um, it's just seeing everything, um, all my dreams manifest in real life. It just gives me more hunger, more belief that everything that I have set out for myself, all my goals, that they're gonna come they're gonna come true hundred percent. It's just a matter of time. I know you don't want to look past this opponent on Saturday yeah. night, but how far, all going well on Saturday, how far away do you think you are from a world title shot? Literally around the corner. It's right there. It's right there. Is it next fight? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a world title shot in the next fight. After this fight. I like the confidence. Absolutely. So what's it going to come down to on Saturday night? Well, I think sharpness, intelligence, and relaxation. That's it. That's it for me. Are you going to look to make a statement? Pardon? Are you going to look to make a statement? Yeah, absolutely. Every single time when I jump in that ring, it's always a statement on my mind. That's all I want to do. And that's what the fans like. I'm a real fighter. When's your next modelling job? I always think about this when <laughs> fighters are models. We had Ramla Ali, didn't we? And I always think, when do you have a next modelling job? Because surely, week. no, you don't. <laughs> Swear to God. I was going to say, it won't be one day if the fight's brutal, so we've got to get the job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's, that's motivation <laughs> well, enough, that's isn't it? it? That's an extra incentive. <laughs> exactly. Well, best of luck for Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. You don't have to worry about that, Matt. <laughs> when's, when's your next modelling job? <laughs> Oh, my, my place was, was smashed up every Monday after every fight. That was just, I just bruised easily yeah. and I got hit a lot. So, you know, not yeah. a good combination. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just asked Richard, I said, when's his next, his next modeling job? And it's next week. And I've said, you two haven't got to really worry about that anymore. And never did you, really. <laughs> That's the last thing he should have on his mind. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? That he said he is, he thinks he's ready for the world title shot next fight. There's a lot of confidence there. You, you've got to admire that confidence, Johnny. As long as he believes it inside, and that's, that's the problem. It's not what we think, it's what he believes. And so when he, as long as he believes that, then do it, get there. But that's what I'm saying, it's about your confidence has got to match your ability when you're getting there. And he's a very talented young man that doesn't know how good he actually is. So now he starts to believe in the way he's talking there. You know, I don't know if they've told him to say that, just come on. If you say it, you'll believe it, keep doing it. He's got to make what, sure... What do when you think will make him believe that? No, sometimes, like, it's like, yeah, it's, and it's sometimes, you know, why he's holding back, it's, it's, it's probably not sure. It's like falling off a bike, once you fall off once, you think, ah, it's not that bad. Yeah. So certain things, he might have to be in a hard fight and digging deep and think, you know what, I can actually do that. He might have to get put on his backside and have to get back up and think, I can do that. Once he once he's experienced something, then that's when the belief comes. And so right now, he's just got to think, I've got to go through it, learn on the job, learn on the job. AJ didn't find out until, you know, he's world champion. He had to learn on the job big time, but he came back and fixed it. This is what this young man's going to do. So he's got to go through it at some point. Absolutely. So what's what's it going to come down to, Matt? What kind of fight are we going to get? I think Rambo knocks him out. I really do. I think his, uh, I think his last fight against Juma was probably a more tricky fight. A South poor, quick, small. And, you know, he worked him out. He took his time. He was patient. He didn't rush it. You know, it was a beautiful body shot that took yeah. him out of there in the end. So, uh, yeah, I, I think he's growing as a fighter. I think he's improving in every area. I think the power, that's just God-given. You haven't got that kind of power. You haven't, and he's got it in abundance. He's got brutal power, isn't he? Yeah. What do you think, Johnny? Turchi being a southpaw will create a few 
Issues? Um, issues, Who but was I, the southpaw? He yeah, worked but, him out. And I was going to say, but the power that uh, Richard has in both hands, he probably doesn't have a problem with southpaws. So Tersh will be a bit awkward to pin down at first. Yeah. But what he, once he lands with that right hand link straight down the middle, then Tersh will become an orthodox southpaw. And that's when the fight becomes easy for Richard. He's got to touch him, he's got to tap him, he's got to make him feel like that, that power first before Tersh all of a sudden realises what trouble he's in. It's a prediction? Uh, knockout win. Knockout win for Richard Rappel. Yeah, knockout. Mid rounds. It's going to be good. You don't want to miss it. Um, that's it for us. Done. The talking's all done. It is all eyes on fight night. Make sure you join us tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, on Sky Sports Action. See you then.